Thank you for everybody uh, who is attending today. We're excited about uh, uh, having this manufacturing hangout in multi-body part modeling. So just uh, by way just of an introduction for those of you who may not know what the multi-body part modeling uh, is all about. Um, what we're really talking about is uh, either uh, complex designs um, that have complex curves and extend across multiple parts can sometimes present challenges uh, during design with having to uh, uh, keep, keep track of uh, cross part, uh, what I want to call pollination, where you're trying to mesh parts together and, and uh, keep your assembly in line. Um, the, the technique of designing the finished shape and extracting components um, is sometimes called a top-down design method. Sometimes, even if the geometry is simple, it's just an easier, more streamlined process to use a top-down approach. A multi-body part is a top-down workflow, which allows you to create and position multiple bodies within a single part document. This technique is especially useful for designing plastic parts. A top-down design workflow eliminates the need for complex file relationships and projecting edges between parts. You can control visibility, assign a different appearance, and calculate the mass of each solid body. When you complete the design, you can export the individual solid bodies as part files directly into an assembly. So some of the advantages of using a multi-body part in a complex design are, are the following. First, it significantly reduces design time. Uh, when you're working in a single part, um, it's can be much quicker than having to deal with uh, an assembly in individual parts. Uh, the entire design uh, resides in the one document, so again, it's just easier to track, easier to manage, uh, quicker to edit. Uh, again, you see there, all editing takes place in a single file. No upfront planning for file structure is required, and all generated part files are associative with the master design. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway from this. Um, is that the generated part files are associated with the master. So the master being the multi-body part file. So what you do is uh, make edits to that master file and that can uh, propagate down to the assembly. So some of the commands, some of the processes for creating a multi-body part. Um, again, this can be uh, you know, the main reason this was top-down design method was set up was for more complex uh, organic uh, designs. And so um, in that case, we're talking about creating the uh, model, uh, shaping the exterior, and then maybe even importing um, items uh, using derived part um, from other models to fill in the internal things. Um, so again, that's just one method is worrying about creating your shape and, and working with complex. But what we're going to kind of look at today is some more simplistic models um, and how this still benefits you. Once you're done, you know, kind of getting some of the, uh, the main shape out of the way, you're going to add features such as fillets and shell and anything else that's required to complete, uh, complete the part. Um, you use work planes, 2D sketch geometry, um, or surfaces to split the part into separate bodies. So that's one of the options is, is to model the, um, create the model as a, as, a, as a single solid and then use the uh, split command to separate into separate bodies. Um, and then you're, you're going to use your regular um, extrude, revolve um, feature commands. Um, you can also derive parts uh, or other components into the file as bodies. You're able to use the move bodies uh, command to position bodies in the part file and also use combine um, to perform a join, cut, or intersect between solids. Uh, then you can continue to add additional features such as holes, grills, 
lips, bosses, whatever you're, whatever you're needing. And then finally, uh, kind of at the end, when all the modeling is done, uh, you would use the make part or make component command to save the individual solids as derived part files, and they're linked to this master file. Um, and just by way of a note, um, different bodies can share the same features such as a fillet or a hole. So just a, a kind of a short command summary, we have uh, what we're going to see today, I guess, is the combined command, um, move bodies, new solid properties, and split. And again, this is a this is a hangout, so we're going to have time for uh, all kinds of questions. I'm going to probably do a um, maybe a 10 to 15 minute presentation here, and then we'll open it up for questions. All right. So with all that said, let's check it out. So coming over here to Inventor, um, what I wanted to look at first was just, uh, again, uh, a simple model, if you will. Um, uh, this is um, a, a corbel uh, wood bracket that I've got sketched up here. And what I want to do real quick is just kind of show you the, the finished product. So this is what the finished product looks like. So wood corbel, it's got vertical bracket, a horizontal bracket, this curved and this little cross bracket, and it's even got some some nice little dowels in here. So again, not a complex design, um, but you'll see here how um, the multi-body part modeling environment makes it makes it uh, easy. And what you'll notice too also here in the um, in the browser is that this is a part file. It's an IPT file. So one of the things to take note of is a setting um, that I have turned on uh, in Inventor. You'll notice that there's a lot of information that's, that's provided uh, for each of these components. So here we have the extrusions and, it, and, and I've named all of these and you'll see that there's some extra information that's in brackets. So if you go to um, the tools tab and we go to uh, application options and we go to part. Under the part tab you'll notice right here is this display extended information after feature node name and browser. If I uncheck that and hit apply notice that it just goes back to regular uh, information for the features. And if I turn it on again and hit apply, you'll see I get this extra information. And if you just kind of look at it, this information is helpful. I've got this top extrusion here and it tells me that I'm forming a new solid and its depth is four inches. So it gives you some extra information. So I recommend turning that on in application options under the part tab, display extended information. That's, that's a good one to have turned on. So you'll notice that I have just regular features in the part file, but then you'll also notice that up above at the very top, I have a folder called solid bodies. And in the solid bodies, I have eight solid bodies. I have the top frame, side frame, this curved frame, the cross member, and then the pegs. So you can see that I've got each of those, each of those created. Now what's interesting here in, in with multi-body part modeling, when you create a new body um, uh, you know, using a feature, those features, whatever features you create can belong to that body or multiple bodies. So you'll notice here that there's this extrusion here, this top extrusion is the feature that first makes up this top frame body. So you can see they're just kind of categorized side frame. There's that. You'll notice that one of the things that we've got is a couple of extrusion cuts here, the peg cut and the cross member cut, and they are shared between both of those, those bodies. So just some things to take note of, um, and as we uh, kind of go through this, I'll just, I just want to outline some of the uh, functionality and, um, and show you how that works, and then we, again, we can open up for, for questions. 
All right, so one of the techniques that I've done is, is I've created what I call a base sketch. So maybe I'll just rename this guy base sketch. So I know that that's what I'm starting my whole design from. And, and um, I'm just going to go in and activate this. And if I zoom in, you can see it's just a regular 2D sketch. I've got dimensions. With the dimensions, I've created parameters. So you'll notice this dimension here says that it equals width. This one here equals thickness. This length here, or this one here equals length. There's a dimension here that is the cross member size. And then over here, I've got this chamfer that I've put in in the sketch. So I've got a chamfer short dimension and a chamfer long. So <coughs> what I've done is added user parameters using the parameters dialog box. So if I scroll down to my user parameters, you can see that I've created parameters for width, length, thickness, depth, uh, curved depth, a chamfer long, a chamfer short, and a cross number. So I've got, you know, I've only populated some. I haven't done everything yet, but uh, populated some. And then if you come up here to the actual parameters, you can see that that D47 equals that width parameter. So the width parameter is driving the size. So this is a, this just a good methodology to use. So what I want to do is I'll finish the sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and use the extrude command. So again, just regular commands. And you'll notice because I don't have any uh, features created yet, by default, this new body option is highlighted here in the dialog box. So it's going to create a new body. So all I need to do is select the profile that I want. So I'm going to select the profile. I'm going to do a symmetric. So I'm going to go from that sketch in both directions. And then I'm going to list parameters. And I'm going to select thickness. And let's try that again. There we go. I had a dimension in there. So now I do thickness. And it's going to create that new body that new solid. So it creates that extrusion and then notice up here it, it creates a solid. So that extrusion belongs to that solid. So one of the things that I recommend doing is naming um, your extrusions and your solids. And do, if you do it as you go it just makes it much easier. So in this case here, because this is the top frame member, I'm just going to Click here and click and type uh, top frame. And then I'll use the EXT. So I know that's an extrusion that I did. So top frame extrusion now belongs to solid 5, which that solid will be renamed to top frame. Now you can see just by the naming conventions that things are going to start to make sense. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share this sketch so that I can use it again. <coughs> and I'm going to do another extrude. And now I'm going to select this body or this uh, profile. And I'll do a symmetric. And again, thickness is the last uh, parameter in there. So I'm going to go with that. And one, one, the one thing I need to make sure of, and I almost, almost didn't do it, um, is I need to make sure that at this point I'm not going to do a join, I'm not going to do a cut or an intersect. I'm going to click New Body again. So once the New Body is selected, you'll notice that the color of this preview changes and gets a little bit darker in the green. So it's kind of a pale green. Or if I switch, then it's a dark green. So don't forget to do that. And it's OK if you forget. If I did a join or something else, I can go in and I can edit that and change it to a new body. So I just do that, and uh, my new body's changed. So I, I know it's a little mistake here because I'm not paying close enough attention. Notice that uh, my extrusion, I didn't actually get the whole part all the way to the corner. So I can edit that. Um, 
feature and select that profile and then edit that feature. Add that profile. So you can see very quickly, even though I made a mistake, I'm able to fix that very easily. I've got now two, two solid bodies. I have the, the uh, top frame, and we'll call this the side frame. And then this will be called me. You notice I can, I can rename this either in the solid bodies folder or in the uh, regular browser. Uh, so now these, these things start to make a little sense to me, right? So now the next thing I'll do, and you can see how, how quickly how quick this is moving. I didn't have to put any constraints in. I didn't have to, you know, place a member into an assembly file and make sure that it was ground at the ground and, and at the origin. I didn't have to put another one in and do any constraints. I'm doing this all from this one part file creating multiple bodies. So again, I'm going to select my profile here and I'm going to go both directions. And this one here is not going to be the same thickness. This is going to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to make this one uh, three inches thick and I'm going to make sure I click on it. And notice there's a little thing going on here. When I click on this, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. And that's kind of giving you a visual clue that, ah, I don't have my new body selected. So once I select the new body, then that uh, can update. And you can see I'll change the thickness to three. And now I've got a very nice uh, multi-body part model that's that's taking shape. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing I want to do is I'll do the next I'll do the next piece here. So I'm going to select the uh, the profile to extrude, and I'm actually going to come up here and select all the way through. So I'm I'm getting this part all the way through because I want to make sure that that bracket. Um, uh, through the part and then I'm going to use that to create a, a groove to accept it in the, in the brackets. So this one here is going to be again a new body both directions and we'll do 1.5 thickness. Look at it you can kind of see how that's going to play within the part and, and we like it so we're going to click OK. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the visibility of the sketch. And that's another thing that, that you do in multi-body part modeling a lot is you'll, you may have, I've only got one sketch here, you can have multiple sketches and use them independently. That's another method to do it, but I'm just going to use this one sketch and I'm just going to currently turn the visibility off um, and so that you can see what's going on here. So. What I want to show you now, a couple of the things I could do, I, I probably should go back and edit this and make sure that, the, that these holes, um, I use a, a different command maybe to create those as a cut, but I don't have to, that's fine. So what I want to do is um, I'm just going to take a look at these, these different bodies and um, how you can look at information and change things on them. So. First thing to note is I can I can either click over here in the um, browser and select the body that way. I can right mouse click and I can go to properties. When I do that, I have the ability here to rename if I want to rename it there. But I also can change the body appearance. Right now it just says as part. I can click update and I'm able to get uh, general mass properties for that one part, for that one body. And of course, if I want, I can come down and, and say, well, I just want to maybe change the uh, change the material, the body appearance. I'm not actually changing the material, but I'm changing the body appearance. So at this point, you know, doing this bracket, um, I'm just changing the body appearance. I'm not actually changing uh, 
material of the part or the component. But I can do that for each one. The other thing I can do is I can come up here to the quick access toolbar and I can click on select bodies instead of right now it's on select face and edges. I can select bodies as my priority and then that way clicking in the uh, uh, in the uh, drawing window allows me to pick the body itself. So I can pick that body to select it. When I want to change um, the appearance, notice that the material is not available, but the body appearance can be picked here from, from the list. Pick that guy if I want. So you can see that I can very quickly start to make this model appear the way I want. Um, and of course I didn't rename this solid yet. I'll rename him. Uh, frame. And And I can rename the extrusions and whatnot as well. So, <clears throat> um, all right. So I just want to I want to open it up to questions. If anybody's got any questions, um, you know, there's more things I, I want to show you, but I'm I'm kind of figuring that you might have those as questions. So, um, Marsha, we can open it up if you've got any yeah. questions. All right. Uh, if anybody's typed Thank anything you. in, let's do that. Yeah. Um, great presentation too, Dave. So. Um, we do have someone uh, that has submitted a question. Let me get that for you. It says, um, once I have a second body created, can I move it? Okay. Great. Good question. Yes. So here, this is a perfect example. So we have more than one body. We have multiple bodies. Um, and we can actually move those bodies. Now, this is a command that's not available until you have uh, multiple bodies. So if I, if I click on the drop-down box for the Modify uh, panel, you can see there's a Move Bodies. So if I click on that command, then this brings up a dialog box that allows me to do several different types of moves. So, <clears throat> So one, if I want to select the body, I select the body. This is kind of an interesting dialog box. Once I select the body, it automatically puts me in to this um, multi-directional move. And it also gives me a little preview because the X by default is set to a one inch offset. So you can see, I'll just kind of zoom in here, it's kind of highlighted. Where it's magenta, that's the body that's selected. And where it's green, that's a preview of the move. So it's doing this free move, and it's giving me an X offset by default. So this is this is the mode it puts you, puts you in. <clears throat> but if I wanted to make uh, move other bodies as well, I could come back and click the bodies command and actually add to the command and select an additional body. So I can I can do multiple body selections within the one command. And the idea here is in this free move is that I can specify an X and a Y and a Z offset. So if, um, if I like that offset and I'm, and I'm done, I can just click Apply or OK and, and the move happens. But just so you know, a couple other options, what we can do is, let me just change this to, and if I go into negative one, notice that just by changing to negative, I can go the opposite direction. So um, that's one of the caveats to this command is there's not a direction arrow that allows you to switch back and forth. It's just a matter of going negative or positive. So if I, if I decide that I like that, but then I maybe want to add something else in like uh, another move, I can add it right by doing that click to add. And then if I select this box, I can expose two different other types of move bodies. I can move along array or I can even rotate about a line. So if I want to do a rotate, and then by default it's prompting me to select an axis, I can select an axis, and I, you can see I get a preview of that rotation, and of course it's doing 90, and I can choose negative 90 and rotate that around. So you can see that I've got, you know, 
multiple moves that I can make within one command. And I can do them separately uh, as well. So there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Notice now in the browser I have this move body um, command that's been added. So I can come back and I can edit that and make edits to it. Or if I wanted to, again, do a separate move bodies, I can do that as well. Good question. All right, I'm going to undo that one just so okay. uh, we what else we got? I suppose, yeah, you know, I'm just going to make a personal comment. Um, I, if you're an engineer and you're colorblind, you're in trouble here <laughs> because you have to be able to see all those different colors. So anyway, the <laughs> second true. question is, how do I separate a single body into two separate bodies? Okay, separate, okay, separate, okay, so. Um, do I need to say that again for you? It's no, just, I think, how do I I separate? think I've got it. I just want okay. to restate it. So basically having um, a model that has one, one body in it and you want to separate it into two, uh, two or more multiple bodies. Okay, good question. So I've got a good example for that over here. So um, this little component here, um, this, you can see this is, a, this is a regular part file. Again, I've only got one solid body. So this is a single body. But let's just say for um, this, let's just say this is going to be a plastic part and it, it's going to uh, need to clip on around some pipe or whatever it's going to, whatever it's going to uh, hold down. So maybe I want to uh, split this into two bodies so that they're actually two, two different halves, two different manufacturable halves. So what I can do is I'm going to create a plane first of all and the plane is going to sit um, tangent to this surface and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select that XY plane as an offset or, or a parallel. So it's parallel to that plane and tangent to that, to that plane. So I'm going to now put a sketch on that, on that plane. And so I'm just going to use a line command and I'll just start here right on the edge and I'm just making some stuff up here but I'm just going to draw this this line that I can fully dimension and constrain but ba basically just creating this line that's going to separate this into two parts and have a little tab um, so that that we can further define later uh, you know with, with a, some sort of locking uh, mechanism, if you will. But basically, I'm just wanting to split this, and I'm going to use this line. You can see it doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be a uh, spline curve. It can be an arc. So um, it can be a sketch plane. It can be a surface. Um, any one of those things can can be used as a split tool. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that sketch, and then over here on the modify panel again. Now we're going to go ahead and use the split tool. So we're going to we're going to use the third option here which is split solid. So when I click on split solid, it automatically selects the body that uh, the, the only body that's there. And what is the split tool? So it prompts me for the split tool and I'm going to select that sketch. And then I'm going to go ahead and click okay. So you'll notice in here in the browser, there's the split and it kind of highlights in the uh, in the graphics window and notice now I have two bodies so now I have two separate bodies so one I can control their visibility I can right click and turn off the visibility of that one we can go ahead and turn off the visibility of that work plane so now you can see that I've got the one half of that component split using that using that line um, and again I can uh, turn the visibility on but uh, yeah, so that's that's how you would split one body into into two bodies. Now, having said that, you could have more than two bodies, and you could say, well, let me let me do a split again. If you want to create another sketch here and maybe split this guy up, you can do that as well. So it's just a matter of now I've got uh, you know more bodies than one to use the split tool on. So two good questions.
All right. Z, any All other right. questions? I, I, I am looking here in the uh, question pane. I assume everybody knew where the question pane is uh, to type in. I actually don't see any additional questions um, right now. Well, let me, let me show them a couple other things, and it may spark some questions. OK. OK, so going back to um, the, um, the bracket design, let me go back to this, to this finished uh, bracket design and show you just kind of let's investigate this and um, how it was done so we can um, see what was done here. Um, let me go, uh, I'm going to drag my end of part marker uh, back up to just below the cross member frame. So one of the things you can see here is that to this point in the modeling process, all I have done is, uh, let me turn the visibility of this guy off. All I have done is created these bodies in the drawing. Now, if I were to turn this body off, this cross member, okay, Turn the visibility off. Okay, notice there's a nice cut in there. Okay, so that's good. I, I want that. I want to be able to cut that. Now, how did that happen? So let's let's turn this back on, and let me actually um, let me turn top frame back on too. So let me go up. Just above that, let me go to this curved extension. So you'll notice that there's this guy right here, cross member cut. Okay, and it's just an extrusion. Okay, so when I take a look, you'll notice there is a cut. What did I do there? So what I did in order to create that is I just used my sketch and an extrusion. So what I did. When I go and edit that feature, you can see that I used that same sketch to extrude, and I selected that profile, and it looks like I need a little help in the top. Looks like, look at this, the top didn't get selected, so I'm going to actually add that little piece to the profile so that the top frame number cuts. So all I'm doing is selecting that same sketch, extruding, but instead of creating a new body or anything else, I'm doing a cut, and I'm cutting, and then, what I do is I click on the solids. And notice that, that here in the dialog box, it's this little magenta uh, line, and you can see the magenta is selected. So all of those bodies are going to be cut. So if I were to deselect a body, let me, let me click on bodies and let me use my control. If I control click this top frame member, it's not going to be cut. So if I click OK, all right, notice the top member is not cut, but the bottom member is, okay? So that's how you do that. You just select the bodies that you want to participate in that cut. So not all of them have to participate. So let me select solids again. Now I'll add the top member in, click OK, and, well, um, I need to uh, make an edit there, edit that feature, and I didn't select that profile again. It didn't, uh, oh, didn't get selected. Okay, so I think what I did is um, that may have been done down here. Let's just see if I can do it this way. Edit feature. Profile, there it is. Okay, so I can add that in. So now when I add that in, you can see, see I can go back at any point and do it. Now that's, uh, that cut is added in. Okay, um, let me, uh, that something's not right here. That's all right. We'll go on. So you get the idea there that that, that cut happens there. So now um, notice that I also, in my sketch, if I go to my base sketch, I've got these little squares created for my pegs. My pegs are going to go in here, and I've got these little uh, squares cut. They're for the pegs, and they're also for the cuts. 
so which is really nice. So now you'll notice that I did a peg cut, which is again just an extrusion. So if I edit that feature, you can see that I selected the sketches to extrude with a cut, and I select the members that that participate in that cut. So I'm able to make those cuts, and then I, the next thing I did was actually add the peg. So now I created a new body. So you can see peg one at this point becomes a new body. Then when I added peg two, and then peg three, peg four, and then I just did some rounding of the pegs. I just uh, created some rounds to make them look really nice, and that was it. So part is done. But now that that's done, now I want to make this into an assembly because I'm going to have a parts list and I want to be able to to define all of those things. So what I do is I go to manage and I click on make components. Now it brings up the dialog box for making components. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my components. And if I if there were some that I didn't want in there, I would I could just I could just come in here and select say peg 2 and remove it from the selection set so peg 2 is no longer a part of it or I can add it back in so you can see that um, the, the components are added by default it's going to give you a target assembly name and I'm going to take the word multi-body off because it's just going to be the wood corbel I'll take out the complete so you can see I rename it and now I can select a template file um, I can specify a template file that I want to use, and I can also specify the location. So once I do that and I click Next, um, you can see that it's going to create, based on the body names, an IPT file for each one of these. Okay, And then I'm just going to accept all of these defaults and I click OK. So, and I'm not going to do it. I already have these select, or created, I believe. So let me just do a cancel, and let me see if I can uh, go in and open that assembly. So here's the assembly file. And now if you'll notice, here's all my parts. Now this is the, one of the great things about how this multi-body part modeling works. Notice each component is is pinned. Okay, So each one is grounded, which means they cannot move. Um, now I can choose to unground them and then I can use constraints to constrain them together. So that's doable. But just by default they're all ground so they're not going to move and um, then everything's going to be okay. And you can see what I did here is I actually took out peg two and peg four because they're the same thing. So at this point I just, I just uh, 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 took them out and then I copied peg one and peg three and I used constraints. Uh, or uh, use the joint actually to place those. So then I can go to my bill of materials and here's all my components. Yeah, I've got my pegs, I got my cross member, my curve frame, my side and my top frame. So we hey. have we have our finished assembly there. Any questions popping up yet? Very nice. Um, let me double check here. Yes, we do have an. I think have another question. Okay. Um, it says, could you use a? Oops, hold on a minute. I gotta expand this down. Could you use a combined subtraction of the cross member from the frame pieces to create the void? Yes. Yes, you could. That's one. That's another method that you could use. Great question. So instead of um, using the um, um, the extrusion and and using a void, I could use the combine command. Great question. So combine is another great command. And if you do combine and um, you click on the 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 part the component that you want to pro, uh, Place the combine on. You would you you would select it, and then what? Then you would select the tool body, and the tool body is the okay. one that's going to perform the operation. So you could totally do that. That's a great question. Um, we have another. 
okay. which is could you touch on pattern patterning patterning to a new solid? And then we have some more questions too. Hmm. Patterning to a new solid. Um, let's take a look at if we can. I'm just going to do a quick rectangle here. Okay. And we'll extrude both directions. Five. Okay, so let's just say um, I want to do a new sketch here. And again, this is another method. I mean, I'm just I'm just going ahead and creating um, um, a new sketch. So I've got a secondary sketch, if you will. I won't worry about dimensioning that. And if I extrude this guy with a cut through all, right? And I, I, I'm assuming this is what we may be talking about. Well, I'm not going to do cut. I'm going to do a, that doesn't make sense, does it? Edit that feature. I'm going to do a new body. <laughs> and um, to a distance of 0.5. Okay, so I have a new body, and I'm thinking the question is, do we want, in using the pattern, like a rectangular pattern, and selecting that body, right? So we've got a couple options here. One is pattern individual features, or we can pattern uh, solids. So I can select this solid here, okay, as the solid to be patterned. Now I've got an option here. I can use the join or I can use create new bodies. So I can create new bodies and now I can select direction one, flip that around if I want, maybe say direction two, okay. And I'm going to create new bodies. And when I click OK, now you can see I've got new bodies created using the pattern command. Great question. Okay. You maybe have already answered this one, but uh, it is, can you modify parts from the assembly drawing, or would you have to go back to the IPT file? OK. So what you can do. Um, in the assembly is there is a relationship folder. So in the relationship, uh, not the relationship, um, where is it? Huh. Let, me, um, let me do something here. Let me say no to that. Something looks squirrely. I may, I may have done something to my set here that uh, I need to undo. So let me, uh, let me go in here and just go to my wood corbel and let me get rid of the that guy. All right. Okay, so let me go back to my finished product here. And let me um, go ahead and go to Manage, Make Components, and Corbel, select our bodies, click Next, and I'm going to click OK. So it, what it automatically does, you see that it automatically um, puts me into the assembly file, and I am not seeing it weird. I may just be having a brain fart here, but um, I should be seeing a relationship to that master file. Um, maybe it's just in the, in the, in the individual components. Yeah, so here we go. In the individual components, you can see that the, uh, the cross member is basically being derived from 
this IPT file. Okay, so it's being controlled by the master file. So if I come to the master file and make some edits, um, then that's going to propagate over to the assembly file. But I do have the ability to um, break that association, and I um, let's see why I can't remember where that is. Um, I have the ability to break that association so that it's either suppressed or it's broken. And if I if I suppress it, then it can be unsuppressed so that the relationship can be turned back on. But if I break it and I save the file and get out of it, then that, that remains broken. So I'd have to recreate the assembly from it. But if once you break that association or suppress it, then you can go ahead and you can modify components from from within the assembly. All right, next question. All right, let me check, see if we've had any additionals. We've had some great questions. I do not see any additional questions. So, um, okay. but we well, would we like to more. thank everyone. I'm sorry? I was just saying, we got a couple more minutes. Um, one of the things I think I was uh, would like to show real quick is... Oops. Oops, we just had one come in. Great. It says, can't you just open the part from the assembly? Um, I, normally I would say yes. Um, but again, because mine uh, is... Um, what I'm looking for is not showing up in my uh, in my browser here I should be able to open it from there um, mm -hmm. but yeah it's not uh, all right I, so normal, yes. okay. yeah if you if you uh, whoever asked that question um, if you'll get their their name I can contact them after and we can kind of explore that again because again uh, sure power of the live presentation <laughs> all right. <clears throat> So right. is there another question? No, I don't have any additional ones right now. Okay. All right. So um, one of the things you can do too, this is um, uh, a pretty cool a pretty cool feature here. Um, let me just skip that. Um, what I can do is I've got this multi-body part. I've got four solid bodies. Um, I can go ahead and use from the manage. Um, I can derive a part into this assembly. So if I come over here and I grab this guide bracket, I can I can derive this this part as a body into the current uh, part file. So I click open and you'll notice that the new multi-body part shows up and you can see here that it's going what I want to do is in the derived part, I want to maintain each body separately, and it's grabbing both solids. I'm just going to click OK to that, and notice now we from four bodies up to six bodies. So you're able to derive other bodies into um, your current one. You can see here's where it shows up here as a derived IPT. So it shows you the link to that file, and and look at that. I, from here, I can open base component. See, it's working. There's base component for that IPT. I can get to that one. Um, but it tells you what it's created from. And then, of course, at this point, I move. This is where I would want to use the move bodies. So I could select my bodies, and I could do a move. And then I can click to add, and I can do my rotate, and I can do negative 90. Pick my axis. You can see, just puts that guy right in place. Click OK, and I'm good to go. So that's that's another cool feature is to be able to derive other parts in to to your assembly. All right, well. I think that was a good okay. uh, a good dive into multi-body parts. 
If you'd like to know more about this, um, you know, we can certainly uh, do custom classes um, or, uh, you know, short paid webinars or whatever, not webinars, but training classes for, for exploring these types of options. Or these are covered in our advanced part and advanced modeling classes.